Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. I've got another Master Duel video for you. So today we're going to be talking about a very recent update uh, to Master Duel that was announced and that was our next selection pack that is going to be the Strong Will pack. But more specifically than uh, any of the featured archetypes in the Strong Will pack, we're here today to talk about a very highly anticipated set of cards and that is going to be uh, those that are commonly referred to as the quote-unquote Shizu cards. Uh, they're called this because the set of cards actually does not have an archetypal name that they all follow under, or that they all fall under, rather, uh, but rather they follow uh, the trend of having all been played by the anime character Shizu Ishtar from the original series. They are retrains of monsters that she played. Uh, specifically, we have retrains of Kelbeck, uh, Keldo, Agado, uh, Mudora, which is down here, and then there's also another one, Zolga, but Zolga's already been released and it's bad and doesn't meld with the rest of the archetype, so don't don't worry about Zolga. Uh, we're mainly here to talk about uh, four main monsters. That's going to be, again, the Kelbeck, the Keldo, the Agido, and then the Mudora. So you've probably heard a lot about these cards and just how scary they can be uh, from people who have played the TCG and or follow the OCG as well. And there's a lot of truth behind that. Uh, the Ishizu cards are extremely powerful, and they can support many archetypes directly. They also have a pure theme that kind of works with Exchange of the Spirit, but that's honestly, like, not at all to do with what really is going to make them powerful. So, I wanted to take this video to you, as always, as ever, uh, try to help some of the Master Duel players, uh, people who maybe don't follow the TCG or OCG as, as closely, uh, to kind of get us all caught up as to what these cards do, why they're good, and what they work with. Now, I will say that we're actually in a very unique position with these Ishizu cards in the meta right now, because while they are good cards, they actually don't fit super well with a lot of currently existing archetypes. It's mostly going to be actually future support that enables these cards to be really, really good. But again, we'll go over all that in this video as well. So. Let's just get right into it. Here are the announced cards. It uh, looks like we do have confirmation that Kelbeck is going to be an ultra rare, uh, but I believe that is the only rarity that we have heard so far. And of course, uh, the following cards, Kelbeck, Keldo, and Agido, are all going to start at two copies. Uh, they are coming into Master Duel uh, pre-hit. They're going to be coming in at two. The Mudora will still come in at three copies. So. Um, rather than try to just like zoom in on the cards on this screen, I'm actually going to go ahead and hop over to uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Wiki here so you get like a larger picture and then you can just read the card text here. I'll of course read it aloud here as well. So, Agido uh, has the ability of if a card is sent from the hand or deck to your opponent's graveyard except during the damage step, you can special this card from hand. Then you can special a level 4 Earth Fairy Monster from your graveyard except another copy of Agido. Uh, the main effect we're looking for here is the following. If this card is sent from the hand or deck to the graveyard, you can activate this effect. Each player sends the top five cards of their deck to the graveyard, or their entire deck if less than five. Um, then, if Exchange of the Spirit is in your graveyard, you can send five more cards from the top of either player's deck to the graveyard. You can only use each effect of Agito the Ancient Sentinel once per turn. So again, we're really not concerned about this bit with Exchange of the Spirit. We're not playing Exchange of the Spirit with these cards. Again, you can, but... Uh, that's not really why they're so good. It's this effect right here, which you can probably guess. Uh, the ability to send the top five cards from the from both players' decks to the graveyard is huge. And not even for, like, milling your opponent out. That's not at all what we're trying to do here. We want to send the top five cards of our own deck to the graveyard more than anything else. And the main reason for that is it's going to trigger uh, not just other Ishizu effects, but also, like, various effects uh, that like to, well, it's like the same reason grass is good, right? Like, of course grass is good, and people will play 60 cards to include grass just for the chance to mill 20 cards. So, being able to mill 5 cards with a much, much, much less of a setup than grass requires is very, very good. Moving on, we also have Kelbeck, the Ancient Vanguard. Uh, this card is going to be... Slightly different than Agido, it's got a slightly different effect here. If this card is sent from the hand or deck to your opponent's graveyard, you can target one special summoned. Uh, or it's rather, if a card is sent from the hand or deck to the opponent's graveyard, you can target a special summoned monster your opponent controls, specialist card from your hand, and then return that monster to the hand. That's of course still a relevant effect, but again, mainly we're looking for the second effect, which is going to be actually the exact same as Agido. 
uh, the effect that if this card is sent from the hand or deck to the graveyard, you can activate this effect. Each player sends the top five cards of their deck to the graveyard, or their entire deck if less than five. And then we have a bonus if exchange of spirits in the grave, you can set a trap card directly from your graveyard. But again, I don't. We're not. We're not concerned about exchange from the spirit. We're concerned about milling the top five cards of our deck, which is pretty huge. Now, those are the, actually the only two of the Ishizu cards that will mill cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. Uh, the other two have slightly different effects, but are still very useful. Let's take a look at Keldo, the Sacred Protector. This is the third card that is going to come into Master Duel Act 2. So, uh, Algido and Kelbeck, both of the cards that mill five cards from the top of the deck to the graveyard. Unsurprisingly, those are going to be uh, two of the ones that are going to be semi-limited coming in here. Uh, the other one's going to be Keldo here. You can discard one other Earth Fairy Monster, special summon this card from your hand, then add one Exchange of the Spirit or one card that mentions it from your deck to the hand. This is particularly good because not only can you search more Shizu cards if you need to, but you can also discard an Shizu card in order to do so. Particularly, you can discard one of your Millos, Millers. rather. You can discard either Agido or Kelbeck in order to get your you know milling started. Uh, and it's also got a quick effect that you can banish this card from your field or graveyard, then target up to three cards in any graveyard, uh, or five if Exchange of the Spirit is in play, but again, we don't care about that. Shuffle them into the deck. So, this is nice because if you do actually end up milling stuff you need back in your deck, it's not even a drawback for this archetype because you can straight up just put three of those cards back into your deck. This is very useful for not only putting stuff back that you don't want to get milled, but also recycling cards that do want to get milled to be milled on a future turn and get even more benefit later. Finally, we have Mudora, the Sword Oracle. This one is going to be coming in at three copies. Uh, you can discard one of the Earth Fairy Monsters, special summon this card from your hand. Then you can place one Gravekeeper's Trap from your deck face up in your spell trap zone. We'll actually cover this card here in a moment because although it is a Gravekeeper's card, it does actually support these Earth Fairy Monsters. So we'll cover that here in a moment as well. You can banish this card from your field to graveyard, then target up to three cards in any graveyards, or up to five if exchange the spirit is on your field in your graveyard, shuffle them back into the deck. So again, we have the exact same effect there as Keldo. So much like Keldo, uh, Mudora here can be used in order to uh, put back some of those cards that you don't want milled, or again, to recycle the effects of cards you want to mill again. It's just, it's, it's so insane. Uh, now as far as Gravekeeper's Trap goes, I don't think every single deck that's going to play these Ashizu cards is also going to play this card, but it's still worth considering. So let's take a look at it here. Uh, Gravekeeper's Trap. This card is a continuous trap card. Uh, while Exchange of the Spirit is in your graveyard, your opponent cannot activate the effects of cards in the graveyard or special summon monsters from the graveyard. As always, you know, we're not really looking to play Exchange of the Spirit just to get these minor beneficial effects, so not going to be concerned about that. You can only use each of the following effects of Gravekeeper's Trap once per turn. During the main phase, you can discard one card, add one Gravekeeper's or Earth Fairy Monster from your deck to your hand. During your opponent's draw phase, before their normal draw, if this card is already face up on the field, declare one card name, look at the cards drawn for their normal draw, and if it was a declar declared card, send it to the graveyard. So, this card's pretty meh, honestly. Uh, it is cool that Mudora can set it face up uh, per its effect, and then you can potentially use that to search an Earth Fairy from your deck to your hand. That's really nice, but at the same time, like, you need to discard an Earth, another Earth Fairy in order to do that. So it's like, it's really not helpful in the sense of like, it's not good at getting Agito or Kelbeck. I mean, it, it can do that, but uh, it's pretty material intensive because you not only would have to discard another Earth Fairy monster, summon Mudora, and then you get to place the F Gravekeeper's Trap face up from your deck, yes. But then uh, once you add the Earth Fairy monster, you have to discard a card to do that. And that's all, you know, or assuming we haven't had a miller just yet. So it's really not ideal to be throwing out all these cards that aren't milling us. And then once you finally search the mill card, you still have to have a way to discard it. So uh, in my opinion, Gravekeeper's Trap is not like super duper great for like setting up plays, but it might not be bad to have as just to be able to play as, you know, a consequence of summoning Mudora, right? Like, again, we're not trying to use Mudora into Gravekeeper's Trap to set up our plays necessarily. Uh, but if we just happen to be able to incidentally play it, I think that's fine. The declaring a card effect is really cute. It's obviously a reference to uh, Ishizu in the anime being able to see the future and see what cards her opponent was going to draw, but does not really have a practical use. I mean, it's not a terrible effect. Like, 
you could, I guess, just declare the one card that's really going to mess you up, and then, you know, if they draw it, cool, they discard it. If they don't, then cool, you know they don't have it, so... Yeah, again, it's kind of mid. I don't think pretty much... I don't think every single deck that uses these sheets of cards will play this, but it is worth considering all the same. So, what kinds of decks do I like to use the Ishizu cards? Well, t I mean, do I even need to say it? Like, even if you've not really, you know, played or followed the TCG or OCG particularly closely, you've probably heard about Tier Limits, and Tier Limits, indeed, uh, can make very good use of these um, Ishizu cards, so much so that, uh, you know, the Agudo and Kelbeck are, I think, it's just showing that they're limited in, in the OCG. Uh, they're limited in the TCG as well. I think all of them got hit to one in the TCG. So, uh, Tier Limits can make very good use of the um, of the archetype, of the Ishizu archetype. The main reason they can is that uh, the Tier Limit cards all have the ability that if they're sent from... I think it's from the deck to the grave. Let's actually read Havanus here. Um... Oh, it's just if they're sent to the graveyard for any reason by a card effect, then you can use the tier limits effects to fusion summon. So, of course, you know, uh, we like to use the uh, Ishizu cards to mill our tier limits, and then we can fuse with them. Uh, we can even use, like, the Mudora and um, Keldo. I always get Keldo and Kel back mixed up. Uh, Keldo to put, like, more tier limits cards back into our deck to fuse with later, so on and so forth. It's all very powerful. Particularly the Tier Limits Havanus, which I was just on earlier. So this is particularly strong with the Ishizu cards and just a particularly strong Tier Limits card in general. I mean, the Tier Limits cards are all pretty strong, but this one especially because it has the effect that when your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, you special summon the Havanus from your hand, and then you send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. So this is immediately going to... Um, either mill, ideally, either mill another Tier Limits card, you can fuse with Havanus in the Tier Limits card, or, and I think you can already see where we're going with this, in an even better world, you would mill the Kelbeck or the Agido, then you get to mill five more cards, maybe even hitting another Kelbeck or Agido, whichever one you haven't activated yet, and then you can mill even more stuff. That hugely opens the pool of fusion summoning you can do, not just in terms of materials, but you can mill even more Tier Limits cards that will allow you to fusion summon. Uh, if you're playing a Shadal package, you can summon Winda, uh, you can summon the um, Kit Kalos, you can summon like just about any number of fusion monsters during your opponent's turn. This is a turn zero play, because again, uh, the Havanus here is a quick effect that activates when your opponent activates a monster effect on the field. So as soon as your opponent starts making plays, you can actually just cut in and pretty much play, start playing your turn like in the middle of your opponent's first turn. Um, and while Havanus is probably like the most major culprit that allows us, as you can see it got limited in the TCG and some item in the OCG, uh, it really is the extended mills of Agido and Kelbeck that make it even more consistent, which is definitely goes to show why these cards went to two uh, upon release. And I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if these cards even saw a further hit down to one uh, before, or rather, you know, probably shortly after Tier Limits released, if I had to guess. Another set of cards that these actually work extremely well with, uh, beyond just the Tier Limits, let's go back over to the, where is it, Road of the King, here we go, uh, is Adamancipator. Adamancipator and Naturia, there's a couple of different Earth archetypes that can actually make very good use of the uh, Ishizu theme, but Adamancipator is one of the main ones, so... The idea here is that we're using uh, the uh, very new Sylph cards to kind of bridge the gap between Adamancipators and these uh, Earth Fairies, the Ishizu cards. That's because Adamancipators, obviously they like milling, right? We like milling uh, the top five cards of our deck to set up our graveyards for Block Dragon and or ideally maybe mill a Block Dragon. There's other stuff like Rock Band Xeno Guitar uh, and Revival Golem that also likes being sent from the deck to the graveyard. Um, but the thing is, that the Adamancipators by themselves don't really have a consistent way to mill or discard the um, Ishizu stuff, right? That's where Vernu Sylphs will come in. Vernu Sylph is an Earth Fairy archetype separate from the Ishizus that are not out just yet, but are likely going to come out in the relatively near future. Uh, let's go over a few of those that are particularly good with the Ishizu cards and then, in turn, the Adamancipators, uh, as well as the Ichuria as well. So... Let's see, there's going to be up here, yeah, one of them here is Vernus Self of the Awakening Forest, it's a level 4 Earth Fairy, 900 attack, 1800 defense, 
Uh, you can dis you can discard this card and one monster or very self card. Send from your deck to the graveyard one Earth monster that can be normal summoned or set. Then so you can special summon one Earth monster from your graveyard with a different name from that monster. Also, you cannot activate non-Earth monster effects for the rest of this turn. And then it's got another effect of you can target a very new self monster, you control attack becomes double, yada yada yada. But obviously, we're mainly here to uh, foolish these Earth monsters that can be normal summoned or set. Particularly here, we have yet again both Agido and Kelbeck can be. Normal summoned or set, therefore they can be sent off the uh, Varner Self Awakening Forest, which will then mill five cards, which might mill more Shizu stuff, so on and so forth. Like, once we get to the point where we're milling cards, you can definitely see, like, why these Shizu cards are so good. There's also Varner Self of the Flourishing Hills. Um, it makes it so that your Varner Selves can't be destroyed by battle, or sorry, by card effects. Um, but more importantly, you can discard this card and one monster or a Self card to add a Varenus Self card from deck to hand and then special uh, inner earth monster from your graveyard. And then you can't activate non earth effects for the rest of the turn. So that's going to be a recurring trend among all the Varenus Self cards. They all have effects that activate by discarding themselves and then another uh, monster or a Varenus Self card. But then you get to special summon uh, an earth monster from your graveyard. So the idea is that the other card you're discarding is going to be something that you can special summon. And this is not only nice for like many, many reasons. Like one, it's obviously, you know, we use the Flourishing Hills to potentially search the Awakening Forest to send or mill in a Shizu card directly from our deck. We could also be discarding the Shizu cards in order to activate these effects. Uh, and furthermore, these two monsters being level four and then, you know, having ways to special summon uh, you know, more Varen Yourself stuff means it becomes a lot easier to get the two level four monsters from Gallant Granite. So even if you don't mill your Block Dragon during all of this, then you still have a way to search it, which is pretty rad. There's actually one other Varen Yourself card that works very well with the Ashesia stuff. Uh, that is going to be, here we go, Varen Yourself of the Misting Seedlings. It says all monsters on the field lose 600 attack, except Varen Yourself monsters. Uh, moreover, we're looking for this effect. You can discard this card and one monster or a Verdu Self card. You can activate non-Earth monster effects for the rest of the turn. Also, add one Earth Fairy monster from your deck to your hand, except Verdu Self of the Missing Seedlings, then special summon an Earth monster from your graveyard. You can only use each of these effects once per turn. So, as you can see, this adds a huge consistency boost to uh, the Shizu stuff even further. And you can not only send them from your decks directly to the graveyard if you want, but if you want to add them to your hand to then discard for something else or use for another reason, you can do that with Misting Seedlings as well. Misting Seedlings is level 3, so it's not able to be used to make Gallant Granite, but still very, very good all the same here. So, there are a couple other ways that you can actually utilize the effects of the uh, Shizu monsters as well. Uh, because remember, they work when they're sent from the hand or deck, just when they're sent to the graveyard by a card effect. Uh, as I believe how they were worded here. Um, yeah, discard a sit from the hand or deck to the graveyard. Oh, it's not even buying a card effect. It's it's even better than I made it sound. It's just if there's a sit from the hand or deck to the, deck to the graveyard for any reason, uh, this could be used to pay costs as well. And particularly one card that becomes very, very good when you factor this in is Herald of Orange Light. I'm sure we all have such fond of memories of Herald of Orange Light from Wind Drytron. Uh, was one of the more feared decks early on in Master Duel. Not the best, I'll still argue that Tri Brigade was the best deck in that meta, but Herald of Orange Light was definitely a card you did not ever want to see. Uh, I was going to say during that time, but really during any time. This card is extremely annoying being able to both negate and destroy a monster. And on top of that, it does so by sending another fairy monster from hand to the graveyard. So once again, you can see where this is going. If you open Herald of Orange Light plus Agido, you get to not only, or Kelbeck for that matter, you get to not only negate and destroy a monster's card effect, which in this meta versus sprites is huge. I've talked about this with Cyframe Gamma before. Uh, the reason that card is so good right now is because of its ability to both negate and destroy the level two monsters that sprites will summon, and then they can't special summon more stuff. You've effectively stopped their plays right there. And Herald of the Orange Light is another option to do that. And then, again, you also get to start milling cards if you discard Agido or Keldo. And again, with Keldo and Mudora, uh, if you've already got graveyard set up, you can start putting stuff back by sending these as well. So, because these are quick effects that uh, banish from the graveyard too, in order to activate. 
This, of course, also means that they work when they are milled as well. So it's a it's an archetype that really self like perpetuates and feeds itself a lot. So another thing you could do, uh, something you could try in theory, uh, if you wanted to make the Shizu stuff work in something like Ad Emancipator or Dragon Link, like right now, uh, with the stuff we currently have, is of course that Grass Look Screener, which I already talked about. Uh, that Grass Look Screener is already an amazing card for decks like this because and you know it's it's enough that even now with it being at two uh in master duel people will still go out of their way to build 60 card decks just to have a chance to draw grass and mill their top 20. of course if you're milling that many cards it's pretty decently likely that you're gonna mill uh, some amount of ashizu stuff as well like agido and kelbeck uh, i will say though that in a lot of decks that use ashizu stuff particularly tier limits right you might be thinking like, oh, like Ishizu Tier Limits, that's got to be a 60 card deck, right? Because they want to mill, and that grass is such a good card, but it's actually not that great. Uh, that grass looks greener is not that good at all in Ishizu Tier Limits. In that deck specifically, you want to keep your deck as close to 40 as possible, and that might sound weird. It's like, well, why? If we want to mill, why wouldn't we try to build a grass deck? It's actually due to ratioing, right? Um, and I'm not talking about Twitter. Uh, I'm talking about the ratios of, you know, a card within your deck, right? Or a certain type of card within your deck. The idea is that by adding those 20 extra cards, uh, two of which are going to be that grass look screener, you make it that much less likely to actually mill your Shizu slash tier limit stuff, particularly Agido and Kelbeck. So the idea is that you actually kind of counterintuitively a little bit, like, with these decks, with this, with this specific mill engine, you want to keep it actually as close to 40 as possible. And that's to, again, just make sure that you're having as great a chance to mill Agido and or Kelbeck uh, as you can. So this might work. To be fair, Grass of the Shizu stuff might work for something like Ad Emancipator and Dragon Link. Uh, that is something that would definitely require testing. The only problem I have with that idea in theory is, like, especially in Dragon Link, like, what else, how else are you going to proc the Ishizu cards, right? That's actually a lot of the reason why I don't think the Ishizu cards are like super duper great at this current moment. And I think this is why Konami decided to release these cards now before stuff like Tier Limits and Vera New Self uh, and the new Naturia support, which I've touched on a little bit, but um, I didn't feel the need to get too specific into because it's the idea is that you're basically using the Vera New Selfs. Uh, with the new Naturia stuff that's not out in Master Duel yet. Um, which, again, the Vayner Selfs are also not in Master Duel yet. So, it's weird, right? I can see why Konami did this the way they did. Um, again, it's because we don't have all this stuff yet that Ashizus can really break that they're releasing, that I believe in here, they're releasing now. But I still don't think that's the right call, because all that really means is this, this other stuff, like Tier Laments, like uh, Vernu Sylphs uh, are going to be like ripe for abuse like upon release and really missing out on a meta particularly with tier limits where we could really explore alternative options uh, beyond the Ishizu stuff to pair with the tier limits you know a lot of people were excited to try like uh, dangers with tier limits a lot of people refer to that as casino tier um, but you know that's just much less optimal than just playing the Ishizu stuff and again we might see these cards go to one, like, upon or maybe shortly after the release of tier stuff, but I think it's still going to be just weird. I don't know. Um, in my opinion, I, I, I do wish these would have come out later, because here's the thing, too, right? Like, I understand the mindset of, oh, release them now while there's not really the stuff to abuse these cards with, so that way they have a chance to see fair play but like here's the thing and i've said this a lot in this video already nobody is using these cards the way they're quote unquote intended with exchange of the spirit right like the goal here from konami's point of view is oh you use these cards to mill set up your exchange of the spirit and then mill your opponent out that way but it's just never going to play out that way that strategy is just not good and not only is that strategy not good but again they the strategy then you know by I don't want to say accident, because it, it feels so, so busted that it doesn't feel accidental, but uh, this archetype can incidentally then uh, hugely boost other decks uh, with its milling. So, I don't know, it's it's weird. These Shizu cards are just weird in general. Um, this obviously was never going to happen, but like, 
I would have been totally fine with these cards just never coming to Master Duel in the first place. Like, um, there's not really any strategies that I'm like particularly sad about missing out on that they would enable. And indeed, I think the decks that they do enable uh, exist in more healthy forms for the metagame without them, generally speaking. But that's just my two cents. Um, like it or not, these cards are upon us, and it does definitely benefit us to be prepared for them. Which again is mostly the, not even mostly, it's the entire point of this whole video here. So hopefully I was able to shine a little bit of light on these cards and what they're all about. Um, the TLDR of it is like, I don't think these cards are going to be hugely impactful upon release. They might give a slight boost to decks like Ad Emancipator and Dragon Link, maybe, but even then I kind of doubt that's going to happen. That said, that doesn't mean they're bad. Definitely look out for many releases in the near future. Again, mainly tier limits and Verity Selfs to help break these cards wide open. All right, that's gonna pretty much cover everything I wanted to talk about with these cards in the video today. If I missed anything, feel free to let me know in the comments below any other uh, potential strategies that these can be used or really more abused win. But in any case, let's just go ahead and move now to our outro. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the very end of the video like this. That means a whole lot to me, uh, not just personally, but it's also a great way of supporting the channel as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other means, uh, you can, of course, feel free to comment and or subscribe right here on YouTube. Uh, I'm always looking to the comments section. Uh, you guys leave some pretty awesome feedback uh, as far as like constructive criticism goes when it comes to deck building, gameplay, channel content, all that stuff. So feel free to leave your opinion down there. I will be sure to take a look at that there. Uh, and then subscribing is going to be the best way to get notifications of when these videos drop. That does happen every day, by the way. So if you're looking for daily Master Duel content, you've come to the right place. And there are more places where you can get some daily Master Duel content. If you check out the description below, follow the top link over to my Patreon page. Uh, there for just five bucks a month, which is as much as you pay for a booster pack uh, You'll find a lot more value than a pack full of filler over there. We've got some Previews for content upcoming here on the channel. We've got some exclusive games uh, that are only posted over on patreon over there We've got some Q&A's and then you can also have your name featured in this lovely credit sequence where um, I thank all of the people who are uh, helping contribute over there on Patreon. Uh, it's a huge support to the channel, and it really means a lot as well. So thank you everyone who is donating uh, that is featured here on screen. And again, um, you know, it's not just a pure donation. You do get some more daily Master Duel content over there just for being a part of the Patreon. But I think that's about all the time that I have for today's video. Once again, I just want to thank you so, so very much for sticking all the way to the end of the video. Again, it just means a lot as I do who um, put a decent amount of work into getting these videos out every single day. But that's about all the time that I've got for now. So without further ado, this is Xlex. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.